Mr Speaker. Speaking of the last election, the Tory manifesto promised to end the abuse of the judicial review. How's it going? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I I welcome the much shorter question from the Right Honourable Lady today. Let me just remind the Right Honourable Lady of a few facts about the COVID inquiry. We set up the COVID inquiry. We have provided it with more than 55,000 documents so far. We have given it all the financial resources it needs so that we can learn the lessons from the pandemic. But, Mr Speaker, in Wales, they also had a pandemic. And what have the Labour-run Wales authorities done there? No independent inquiry in Wales. As ever, one rule for Labour and another for everyone else. Mr Speaker, he acts like it pretends that it's complicated, but it's simple. They set up the inquiry to get to the truth, then blocked that inquiry from getting the information that it asked for, and now they're taking it to court. I know he considers himself a man of the people, so using his vast knowledge of working class Britain, does he think working people will thank him for spending hundreds of thousands of pounds of their money on loophole lawyers just so that the government can obstruct the COVID inquiry? Well, we will provide the inquiry with each and every document related to COVID, including all internal discussions in any form as requested, while crucially protecting what is wholly and unambiguously irrelevant. Because essentially, the Right Honourable Lady is calling for years' worth of documents and messages between named individuals to be in scope, and that, Mr Speaker, could cover anything from civil servants' medical conditions to intimate details about their families. But I really will say to the Right Honourable Lady, I find it extraordinary that she should lecture us on value for money for the taxpayer, when I understand she has now purchased two pairs of noise-cancelling headphones on expenses. No, I will be fair. I will be fair to the right honourable lady. If I had to attend shadow cabinet meetings, I think I'd want to tune them out too. Can, can I just say that Deputy Prime Minister was very good saying he was welcoming short questions. I'd also welcome shorter answers. And yeah. Joe yeah. Mr Speaker, all we're asking for is what the COVID inquiry has asked for. And across the world, COVID inquiries are well underway. While his government hides information and shells out public money on legal bills for the Oxbridge One, the former Prime Minister is now demanding another million to pay for his new lawyers. Now, I know the honourable gentleman and his former boss has fallen out, and maybe he wants to patch things up, but can he seriously say this is a good use of taxpayers' money. Yes. Deputy Prime Minister. Well, uh, if we want to talk about uh, relationships between, between different people, I don't think we need to search her WhatsApp messages to know that there's no communication between her and the leader of her party. And I will happily, happily stand up for our record on COVID, because when she and her party were carping from the sidelines, calling for longer lockdowns, I was working as culture secretary to keep our football clubs running, to protect our theatres and museums, and deliver the largest cultural recovery package in the Western world. That's the difference between her and me, Mr Speaker. While she was collecting titles, I was getting on with the job. Mr Speaker, I know for the last couple of years he's been trying to prep PM Prime Ministers for this, but these punchlines are dire. He really (laughs) needs to go back to school himself. And speaking of school... Thousands of children are missing from school. Absence has nearly doubled since before the pandemic. The Prime Minister says he's maxed out on his support for school pupils. But why did the government abandon its plans for a register of missing children? Deputy Prime Minister. Well, on the specifics of the Right Honourable Lady's question, that is not the case, and we continue to keep the policy under review. And what I would say is... 
I am very proud of this government's record on funding and support for schools. Four billion pounds more this year, four billion pounds next year, and the result of all of that investment is we have the highest standards of reading in the entire Western world. What a contrast from when the party opposite were in power. Angela Rayner. So there we have it, Mr Speaker, thousands of children missing under review still. So let me ask him about another, uh, something else that's gone missing. The Public Accounts Committee this week revealed that the government's fraud increased fourfold, mm. with ministers overseeing the loss of £21 billion of taxpayers' money in the last two years. Can he tell us how much of our money they expect to recover? Yeah. The, the Prime Minister. Well... Mr Speaker, we are working tirelessly to recover those funds and, have made, and we have made huge progress already. But again, if the party opposite wants to talk about, wants to talk about good use of taxpayers' money, what do we have from the party opposite? Plans for an unfunded £28 billion spending spree. And what would that do? drive up borrowing, push up interest rates, adding £1,000 to everyone's mortgage. Mr Speaker, I know they're out of touch, but even she must realise that Britain cannot afford Labour. Angela Rayner. Mr Speaker, Britain can't afford any more of the Conservatives. And he seems to have lost count. The answer is a quarter. Only a quarter of the billions of pounds of taxpayers' yeah. money lost to fraud is expected to be clawed back. If this government can't get the public money back, they can't be trusted with anything else. Yeah. It's become a pattern of behaviour from the Conservatives. An inquiry missing the evidence, schools missing their pupils, taxpayers missing their money and ministers missing in action. Yeah. And all the while... Working people pay the price for their mistakes. This week, the Public Accounts Committee also warned that this epic fraud and waste could happen all over again due to the ministers living in denial of the facts. If his government can't admit the truth, then how on earth can they learn the lessons? Yeah. Yeah. Let me Prime Minister. Well, I would say to the right and lady, we're actually putting more resources in throughout this year to tackle fraud and error, and we continue to make real progress with it. But again, it's, it's quite extraordinary from the, from, the, from the party opposite. While we are working to drive down inflation and energy bills, what, what's the right honourable lady doing? Receiving £10,000 from Just Stop Oil backers. Adopting their policies, backing protesters, blocking new production and forcing us to import more foreign oil and gas. Do you know what? For once, Mr Speaker, I find myself in agreement with the GMB union. What did they say? It's naive, lacks intellectual rigour and could decimate communities, just like Labour. Yeah.